Hello and welcome to Huts of the Huskies Dog Science Explained video and today we're going to review the evidence around the idea that some dog breeds are genetically more aggressive than other breeds. So we'll look at things like how different breeds score in temperament tests, we'll look at bite records to see if so-called dangerous breeds are responsible for more bites and then we'll look at if breed-specific legislation has decreased the dog bite rate in certain countries. So the first couple of studies we're going to look at were conducted in Germany, where in the 2000s Bull Terriers, Pit Bulls and Staffordshire Bull Terriers were banned, so you can't own them, and a lot of other breeds now have to be kept on a lead and muzzled at all times. So if you own one of these, this second group, these breeds, they had to pass a temperament test, including 21 situations of dog-human, dog environment and dog-dog interaction that might occur in everyday life. So Ott et al. 2008 recorded the results of 415 dogs on the dangerous breed list who were taking this temperament test and then compared their scores to the scores of 70 volunteer, essentially, golden retrievers. And they found there was no significant difference between the so-called dangerous breeds and the golden retrievers. So 5% of the dangerous breeds showed inappropriate aggression compared to 1.5% of the golden retrievers. And even though that is slightly lower, this was basically purely due to chance because the dangerous breed sample was bigger uh, there happened to be slightly more aggressive dogs and of course unlike the retrievers the owners of these dangerous breeds knew that if they failed their dog would face being put to sleep and obviously it's well known that an anxious owner can make a dog act out and of course if these breeds were genetically predetermined to be aggressive we'd expect a much higher percentage than five percent so next we're going to look at two studies which both use the same questionnaire to survey 5,312 owners of 30 different breeds. Uh, one used people belonging to different breed clubs and the other used an online sample. And basically they both recorded if the dog showed aggression in a variety of different circumstances to a variety of different people. So this graph shows the percentage of the breed which showed aggression in this circumstance. So with the breed club surveys, you can see some of the breeds are higher than others. Higher percentages of those breeds were showing ag aggression. So here for stranger-directed aggression, the Dachshund is high and the Husky is low. Uh, but this changed depending on the type of aggression. So here for owner-directed aggression, the Dash Hound is lower and actually the Basset Hound and the Spaniel are highest. And again, it's different for dog-directed aggression. So there's no clear pattern saying that one particular breed is more aggressive. So if we now look at the results from the online survey, which included more breeds, including some of those that are generally thought of as aggressive, like the Pitbull. For stranger directed aggression, all of the breeds that tend to be on the dangerous dogs list scored low. And actually, the only two that stand out as high here are the Dachshund and the Chihuahua. For owner directed aggression, again, we find that the traditional dangerous breeds are low compared to what are actually considered very friendly breeds like the Spaniel. But if we look at dog directed aggression, we do find that some breeds like the Pitbull, Akita, and Doberman are a little higher, but so are other breeds generally not found on dangerous dogs lists like the Spaniel and the Jack Russell Terrier. And with the aggression towards other dogs in the same house, again, the Chihuahuas are quite high and Jack Russell Terriers are quite high. And when all the data was analysed together, what the researchers found was that Dash Hounds and Chihuahuas are the most likely to be aggressive, or more of Dash Hounds and Chihuahuas in the population are aggressive, I should say, and that they, along with Jack Russell Terriers and Beagles, were most likely to bite their owners. Really, the only result which supports current breed-specific legislation, which generally tends to ban sort of bully breeds, was that 20% of Akitas and 20% of pit bulls surveyed were aggressive to other dogs, but the same is true for the Jack Russell Terrier, which isn't affected by breed-specific legislation. So if we move on to bite frequency records, and we'll start with data from Australia, where pit bulls, among other sort of bully breeds, are banned. And some of the data which is used to support the banning of breeds like the pit bull is Sachs 1996, who found pit bulls were responsible for 32% of fatal dog attacks from 1979 to 1998, and 22% between 1989 
1994. So obviously those are, those are high figures when you consider the amount of different breeds there are. Uh, however, a more thorough study over the same time period found that they were actually only responsible for 6.7% of the deaths. And this discrepancy is likely to be due to an identification issue. Basically, in Australia, all bully breeds, including bull mastiffs, boxers, the American bulldog, are all called pit bulls. So when you use incidents where the breed was definitely an American pit bull terrier, the results change a lot. The other issue is that this study didn't consider the number of each breed in the population. For example, if you have 100 pit bull bites and 100 German shepherd bites, but there are 2,000 pit bulls and 1,000 German shepherds, the percentage of German shepherds that bite is higher, making them, statistically at least, more likely to be aggressive. So if we look at data which considers the number of each breed in the population and the number of bites each is responsible for, we can work out the percentage of dogs of each breed which have bitten. So this data is from the NSW government um, from 2003 and it's for dog bites from 2004 to 2005, uh, but it also includes bites on animals as well as bites on people, and it does seem to suggest that pit bulls bite more. However, it's still only a 1% of the pit bull population that's showing aggression, which again, if they were genetically predetermined to be aggressive, we would expect this number to be in the 80s or the 90s. And you also have to realise that the population data is licensing data, and not all dogs are registered, and there does tend to be a higher proportion of some breeds, particularly bully breeds, that aren't registered. So these percentages are probably unrealistic. So the vast majority of studies use bite records from hospitals. So if we have a look at some of those. And this one shows that crossbreeds were responsible for the most bites, followed by German shepherds. And again, Thompson 1997 analysed data from Adelaide Hospital and found most were caused by German shepherds with bull terriers and other breeds being nearly half as likely to have caused a bite. So the German Shepherd was twice as likely to be the cause of a bite than the bull terrier breeds. The issue with these studies is, of course, not all bites require hospital treatment, so they tend to exclude the smaller breeds who only give very s slight injuries. So Van der Kurt, 1999, conducted a survey of 413 dog bites that occurred in public places. And again, you can see German Shepherds were the cause of most bites, followed by cattle dogs. And the breeds often labelled as aggressive, like the Pit Bull Terrier and the Bull Terrier, are much lower, much less likely to have been responsible for these bites. Next, we'll look at data collected by the Breeds Association of 750 bites. And you can see again, apart from crossbreeds, German Shepherds and Cattle Dogs caused the largest proportion of bites, and the American Pit Bull Terrier was responsible for only 0.4%. Obviously, all this data is limited, as German Shepherds and Cattle Dogs are a very popular breed in Australia, so probably very few individuals bite, but this highlights that the popular view that most dog attacks are caused by dogs on the dangerous dog list isn't supported by evidence, and dogs which come out looking as the most dangerous in, in dog bite data, which is used when legislation is created, varies wildly depending on the data you've used, and there's no real predictable relationship between the number of bites and the breed. Obviously, the other argument is that certain breeds are more dangerous because they are physically capable of causing a lot of damage when other breeds aren't. However, there was a study by Ryan in 2002 which documented several serious injuries inflicted on children by toy breeds, so things like your chihuahuas. So if we move on to a huge study that was done in the Netherlands of 1,078 dog bites, and the authors calculated the bite risk index, which is basically, like we said before, the percentage of registered dogs that have bitten, calculated by dividing the fraction of the breed in the biting population by the fraction of the breed in the whole canine population. And they did find definite breed differences with Rottweilers, Dobermans, German Shepherds and Belgium Shepherd dogs being significantly above the average uh, but none of the bully breeds, which are typically thought of as aggressive, are. Uh, so as you can see, the most aggressive dog breed tends to differ depending on the population of dogs in question, suggesting it's not the breed that is causing it, but rather some other factor, maybe uh, there's a stereotype, this breed is very popular with irresponsible people in a certain area, or something like that. Finally, we're going to look at if 
breed-specific legislation has worked to reduce the number of dog bites and the number of attacks. So the first study we're going to look at was conducted in Spain, where all dog bites have to be reported to the council, and they looked at the number of incidents in the four-year period before breed-specific legislation was introduced, and the five years after, and basically they found that of the 4,186 bites, 1,877 occurred before breed-specific legislation, and 2,309 occurred after. And even when you factor in that the dog population has increased over the 10-year period of the study, what you get is that the number of bites has not changed significantly. It's certainly not decreased since breed-specific legislation was introduced. Now, the breed was only recorded for about half of the cases, but if we take a look at the data, this graph shows the percentage of all registered dogs that each breed makes up and the percentage of bites they were responsible for, both before and after the breed-specific legislation was introduced. Now, if there was no effective breed, we'd expect each breed to be responsible for about the same proportion of bites as their prevalence in the population. So these bars should be nearly equal, but as you can see, there does seem to be some effect of breed, with German shepherds and shepherd-type dogs being responsible for more bites than expected by chance, and in any case, many more than the dangerous breeds, all of the dangerous breeds and their their crosses put together. Uh, So these are the bully breeds, all the ones that are banned in Spain. And you can also see they're actually biting slightly less than would be expected by chance. Uh, But of course, you do have the issue that not all dog bites will be reported and not all dogs are registered. And finally we're going to look at Clayson et al, 1996, a study which compared the number of people admitted to a UK hospital with a dog bite injury before and after breed specific legislation was introduced and they found that there was no significant difference. So basically the legislation hadn't reduced the number of dog bites. The only issue with this study is that it only looked at two three-month periods and obviously a longer study like the one before would have been more accurate. So to summarise, the evidence suggests there are some differences between breeds in terms of aggression but these aren't consistent differences and due to large within breed variation it seems that other factors have an effect. Next, the breeds that seem to bite more or be more aggressive are not those currently affected by breed-specific legislation. And in fact, in temperament tests, the so-called dangerous breeds scored just as well as others. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, This is actually the first part of a Dog Science Explained mini-series on canine aggression. And the next part will discuss whether environment or genetics are the cause of dog aggression in individual dogs. Uh, And there will be a link to parts two and part three as they come out.